Ready to go back there? Awesome. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome to worship. I see a couple more cars pull into the parking lot, but we're going to go ahead and get started this morning. And for all of you who are joining us on our live stream, I know quite a few of you are on spring break this week. Um, so we're happy that you are worshiping with us on our live stream this morning. And we uh, hope that you guys are having a great time on vacation and for safe travels for you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us this morning, and then uh, Ryko is in North Carolina this weekend visiting family, um, but, so he'll be back with us next Sunday, but Andrew and Eli are going to lead worship for us this morning, which we're very thankful for, um, but let's go ahead and pray. Loving and most holy God, as we come into this space, into this time of worship, we pray that you would to focus our hearts and our minds on you and your grace and your great love for each and every one of us. Help us to set aside those things that we have brought in with us this week that are pulling our focus, that are distracting us, that are weighing us down. And help us to step into your peace and your comfort and your joy on this Palm Sunday. Be with us now as we worship you. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Will you stand with me and worship on this Palm Sunday? Uh, if you have palms with you, feel free to wave them really high um, and celebrate God's presence with us today in his salvation.
If you would remain standing for just a minute more uh, as we join in our affirmation of faith this morning with the Apostles' Creed, let's unite our voices. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. 
As we go into our time of prayer this morning, I do want to ask if anyone has any prayer requests or praises that they would like to lift up today. We do want to remember everybody who's traveling for spring break. Um, I know Dickinson's, uh, I think, are in Disney World, which they're very excited about. But um, we want to wish them safe travels. I think the Deckers are traveling this weekend. Ryko's traveling this weekend. So we have a lot of folks out just for spring break. So let's pray for traveling mercies for all of them. Just so you know, baby noises do not bother me during service. Don't worry. <laughs> Any other prayers or praise this morning? I love babies in service. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Remind me of your names. I don't think I caught them as you came in. I am Brandon. Nice to meet you, Renee. I'm Renee. How are you? <laughs> It is, it is. <laughs> All right, Renee and Brandon, just prayers for the family. All right, any others? Thank you, we'll remember that one. No others? All right. I don't think you guys were here last week for us to congratulate you in person, but you know. Barron's passed their motorcycle test. <laughs> so they're now licensed motorcyclists. We're super excited. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Don't shake your head at me. <laughs> Very disappointed in the lack of leather jackets, though, today. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say. Any others? All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer together this morning. Loving, holy, and most gracious God, we come before you once again this morning. And as always, as always, we begin with a prayer of thanks. We are thankful for the gorgeous weather outside. It is so sunny, it is so beautiful, and we are just thankful for the reminder that spring is on the way, that Easter is coming up next week, and just for all of the reasons that we have to rejoice in your very presence and the reminder of the beauty of your creation all around us. God, we are thankful. We are thankful for this time to be together, to worship you, to be together as a community of faith here in person and with those who are joining us on our live stream as well. We are just thankful for this opportunity to be together. And we do lift up our praises this morning. We do lift up all of those who are traveling for spring break. And we are so thankful that they have the opportunity to, to, to get away as a family and to be together and to enjoy some time of rest. And we pray that you would continue to be with them as they, uh, as they are traveling and to bring them home safely. And we do lift up a word of thanksgiving uh, for Kathy and Roger, just for them passing their, their, their test, their, their motorcycle test. We're so proud of them. We're so excited for them. This was a big accomplishment, and so we do rejoice with them this morning. For all of those other praise, praises and blessings that you have poured out on us, God, we do, again, give you thanks this morning for them. And we do also lift up our, our prayer requests. We lift up those things that are weighing on our hearts, those things that are causing us stress, those places where we feel helpless or we feel like we are unable to, to match the task that is ahead of us. And so we lift those things up to you. We lift up those who are in need of healing this morning, whether it be of body, of mind, of soul, or of spirit, and we lift them up to you. And Lord, we do lift up Renee and Brandon and their family, and, and we just we give you thanks that they are here with us this morning and continue the, to pray that you would just be with them and that your presence would surround them. We pray for those who we love this morning who are recovering from surgeries, who are recovering from illnesses, and pray that your healing would come quickly for them. We pray for those who are facing struggles at their job and uncertainty for the near future, and pray that you give them peace and comfort. God, more than anything this morning, remind us how thankful and how glad we are to call you our Father. We are thankful for everything that you are. We are thankful for everything that we are in your grace, as we pray together the words of the prayer which you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we continue in our time of worship this morning. Um, it is Holy Week, so we do have Holy Week services coming up. Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, both of those services are going to be at 7 p.m. over at the Browns Lane campus. Maundy Thursday is going to be a celebration of communion, and then we're going to have prayer stations um, around, so it's going to be a little more kind of loosely structured um, and just a time for us to be in prayer together. Good Friday is going to be what's called a tenebrae service, lots of scripture reading, lots of dramatic lighting, lots of um, all of those wonderful things. And so we hope that you will join us for, um, for either one of those services. Because it is Holy Week and we have things going on on Thursday and on Friday, we are not going to have Wednesday Night Live this week. Um, so we got to get, get the Gordon Hall set up <laughs> this week um, and all of that. And so we will not have our Wednesday night dinner this week, but it will resume next week. Um, and then the only other announcement that I can think of that we need to make is 5S. Um, our board game fellowship group is not going to meet this Saturday because I begged for mercy to please not have anything the night before Easter. Um, but we're going to meet next Saturday instead. And that's going to be from 6 to 9. Did I miss any announcements? I think those are all of the urgent ones. And again, I'll leave um, all of those service times in the comments on this video, and they're also on our Facebook page as well for our Holy Week services. All right. Our scripture for this morning comes from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11, and this is the story of Palm Sunday. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God this morning. Thanks be to God. So it is Palm Sunday. It's time to roll out the red carpet, so to speak, and start heading toward Easter. Now, Holy Week is an emotional time. It is one where we confront the, the chaos, the fear, the uncertainty, and the joy that was the final week of Jesus' life and ministry. And today, we remember the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Thursday, Maundy Thursday, we will, remember, we will remember the Last Supper and Jesus' desperate prayer in the garden. Friday, we will remember the procession to Calvary and the cross. And Sunday, we will celebrate once again. We have a full week ahead of us as we gear up for Resurrection Sunday when we will celebrate new life and love from the Creator that knows no bounds. But before we can get there, we are continuing to make room this Lent, and this week is about making room for worship. A little about the passage this morning before we dive into our theme for this week. Um, what we celebrate as Palm Sunday is from this passage. Now, this is the rare story that shows up in all four gospel accounts, and they are pretty consistent across the board as to the series of events. 
Jesus instructs the disciples to go into the town before they come to Jerusalem and find a donkey and, and her colt and bring them back so that they can enter the city. And the disciples put their cloaks on the donkey so Jesus can sit on it, and then they enter the gates of Jerusalem. And then a huge crowd comes around them, and other people start laying their cloaks in front of them for the donkey to walk on, and they are, they are waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. A quick word about Hosanna before we can kind of tie all of this together. Hosanna is an English approximation of a Hebrew word that was then translated into Greek. Um, so you got several different translations there. But loosely, Hosanna means please deliver us or please save us. And collectively, a hosanna became the word for something that gave thanks or that gave adoration to God, the only one who could deliver or save his people. A hosanna is an act of worship. Shouting hosanna to Jesus was a recognition and a public affirmation of his identity as the one who saves. So we have people laying cloaks on the ground. We have people shouting Hosanna as Jesus comes through the gates of the city riding on this donkey. This is a very clear homage to the entrance of a king coming into the city. And Matthew even helpfully points out that this was all done to fulfill a prophecy that, a king, that, that the king would enter into Jerusalem. But a king, in the traditional sense, would ride in triumphantly on, on a horse. There would be some kind of covering on the ground so that his horse's hooves did, would not have to touch the ground. And there would be crowds of people screaming affirmations and adorations to the king. This was usually done in terms of conquest. The conquering king came back to the city to celebrate victory. But instead of a conquering king, we have the Messiah riding on a donkey with, with cloaks on the ground as a hastily made covering and, and people beginning to shout hosannas, words of thanks and praise to the king of kings. The humility of this moment should not be lost on us. Jesus is coming into the city of Jerusalem for what he knows is going to be the last week of his life. He knows these crowds are going to turn on him. He knows the disciples walking by his side will abandon him at the crucial moments. He knows the crucifixion is coming, but he also knows the triumph that is waiting on the other side. This is the culmination of everything, the purpose of the incarnation, the reason that God came close to humanity to walk alongside people and to show exactly how much they are loved beyond anything they could possibly imagine, to show those who were shunned and insulted and cast out that they still had a place in the family of God. The ministry of Jesus to the very end continues to defy expectations. The grand entrance into the holy city comes with an impromptu and spontaneous moment of worship, adoration, of people giving what they can in that moment to show the identity of Jesus to others. The whole city is stirred by this demonstration of praise. And they are outside of the temple. They're outside of the typical place to worship. And they are worshiping simply in response to the very presence of God being among them. And as we turn our attention to the idea of what it means to make room for worship in our lives, we have to take a moment to think about what worship is and what it can look like. Because don't get me wrong, I love a grand cathedral. I love the, 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 the bells and the smells that come with super high church services with incense and robes and pageantry and, and all of that. Worship can be grand and, and beautiful and rich. 
but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be ostentatious or complicated or ornate. And from the story that we see today, as long as there is a spirit of praise and a genuine recognition of who God is for humankind, everything else kind of fades away. It is the spirit and the heart that matters. And yes, I did sing the song Heart of Worship a lot while I was writing this message. That's an old throwback there. I don't know how many of you have seen the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, um, but they, if, if you haven't, or if it's been a minute, they're hunting for the Holy Grail in that movie. And uh, at the end of the movie, they get to the place where the Grail is kept and, and the room is full of these golden uh, jeweled cups. They're all very beautiful, very fancy, very ornate. But as, as a final challenge to test if they understand what they are really looking for, they have to choose which cup they think is the actual grail. And Indiana Jones looks around at all of them and pauses as one catches his eye and says, that looks like the cup of a carpenter. And he reaches behind all of the beautiful chalices to a small, plain, wooden cup, which is the true grail. To make room for worship, we have to understand the one we are worshiping. And yes, the creator of all things, the giver of grace that we cannot totally fathom, but also a God who chose to walk alongside us, to work through us, and to love us completely and fully. The God who would have every right and reason to judge in fury and in wrath, but instead chose to save through grace, through unmerited favor. We are called to walk humbly with God, and it is Jesus, the very word, who showed us what that meant. Worship can be a simple and heartfelt moment of recognition that God is with us. To make room for worship is to make room for the presence of God in all moments and places. And we welcome the spirit of the living God into our lives and in every moment. Worship happens in the quiet moments, in the small and the large moments, in the busy moments, in the everyday, and in the special. Worship is for all moments, in all places, at all times not just for grand cathedrals on Sunday mornings. And when we make room for worship in our lives, it does not mean that we have to have a worship set playing and, and, and fancy high church prayers. It can mean simply remembering to say a heartfelt thank you, giving a word of true praise and thanksgiving for who God is, and allowing the simple joy and peace that we feel in worship to overwhelm us for a moment. We can make room for worship in all places and moments. We had a small group go to the Abbey of Gethsemane yesterday for a few hours of retreat time before the, the busyness of Holy Week. And I took one of my new favorite books with me, and it is called Every Moment Holy. And it is, uh, it's prayers and it's liturgies for everyday things. And liturgy is just a fancy church word for, for an ordered form of worship. Uh, in just a few minutes, we're going to go through our full communion liturgy. The purpose of a liturgy is to bring an order and a purpose to an act of worship. It helps focus your mind and focus your spirit on God in a moment. They're meant to draw us to a place of worship. Every Moment Holy is a book of liturgies for everyday stuff that we would probably not count among moments that could be worshipful. There is a prayer for everyday tasks like preparing meals and doing laundry. There are prayers for going on vacation, for stargazing, for watching storms, for setting up a Christmas tree, for welcoming a new pet, before going to work, for paying bills, for loss and grief, for table blessings, for all of the small and the large moments that we can think of. And some of them are long and some of them are very, very short. There's a prayer for when you hear birds singing. You draw praise from the frailest of things, so also draw praise from me. There's a prayer for the unexpected sighting of wildlife. O oh Christ, who sustains all wild creatures, care also for me, your child. 
It is a wonderful reminder that any moment can be turned into a moment for worship. Worship is the simple response to the presence of God with us. So whether it is on a Sunday morning as a community of faith, celebrating communion together, sharing a meal with people that we love, being in nature, or doing our everyday tasks, those are all times to worship. The hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, may say it best. Come thou fount of every blessing and tune my heart to sing thy grace. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Making room for worship makes room for the very real presence of God in every single moment that we draw breath. Worship is not defined by the building, the trappings, the decorations, the order, or the style. It is the offering of our very selves and our lives in praise and thanksgiving to the work of God's grace in us and in the world. Worship is for all moments, even if it is the smallest prayer of thanks and even with the humblest of offerings. We are going to do our full communion liturgy this morning. And uh, your, responsive, your responsive part will be in bold on the screen. But we are reminded that as we come into a time of communion that Christ invites to this table all of those who love him, all of those who earnestly repent of their sin, and all of those who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news, that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and so that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In love you made, yourself, you, you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, your love remains steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he shared a meal with his disciples, and at that meal he took bread and blessed it and he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. And so do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, and it is poured out for you 
and it is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice that is in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, that Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us who have gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, those who are redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, make us one with each other so that we might be one in ministry to all of this world until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. It is through your son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit in your holy church that all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. If you have never taken communion with us before, or if this is your first time being here in a while, I want to remind you that this is not my table, it is not River City's table, it is not the United Methodist table. This is the table of God. And so all of those who wish to receive are welcome to come. Uh, we are gonna come down the center aisle, you will receive bread and, and a cup. You can kneel at the altar, you can take them back to your seat if you would like however you would like to receive communion this morning, but you are welcome. I'm gonna ask our worship team if they would come up first. And uh, Kathy, would you like to help me serve communion this morning? Come on up. I'm gonna have our worship team come up and, uh, and then the rest of you just come up as you, as you feel uh, led or feel free.
falls at your feet You are what He has searched for And the rich man is broken when he stands beneath sky full of stars and you sit at the table with the wounded and the poor and you laugh and share stories with the thief and the whore could just be silent and leave us here to die. Still you sent your son for us. You are on our Just a reminder, Thursday and Friday, 7 p.m. at Browns Lane. And then we will be back here next Sunday for Easter at 1045. It's going to be great. Would you stand this morning for our blessing and our benediction? It is our weekly reminder that the love of God, it is with you. And the grace that has poured itself out on us through his son, Jesus Christ, it is sufficient. It is enough. And the power of his spirit is with you, and it goes before you as you leave. So go in the love, in the power, in the grace, and in the peace of God. Amen. <laughs>